Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today, once again, we are talking about Fab. Now, what is Fab? Well, Fab is Epic Games' new universal game development marketplace. It's basically a merger of the Unreal Engine marketplace, Quixel Omega Scans, as well as the Sketch Fab store. And what you see in front of you, this is a listing for Fab. If you were wondering why there was a Space Marine on the title, well, this is a free asset you can get. And this actually illustrates one of the cool things about Fab. You can actually download things. This is actually a blunder asset. It's not even an Unreal Engine asset. So you're seeing Fab is turning into a universal asset store. It also kind of illustrates some of the flaws <laughs> with uh, Fab uh, in that, uh, again, CC by license, which is very cool. So this is a free asset you can use however you wish. Uh, but at the same time, it is listed as a Chaos Space Marine from the Red Corsairs, which I assume are both trademarked by Games Workshop. So it does have its typical issues. So this is Fab. Now, the big thing about Fab is, again, the launch was a bit of a train wreck. Well, we do have a roadmap of where they're going with it, and they're going to fix some very critical things. They also announced some cool new features. So we got things like text comments coming back as well. Get this one. Godot integration in the future has been confirmed. So that's what we're going to look at today is the future roadmap of the Fab Marketplace, and maybe it will be uh, what you want it to be in the end. Another thing you want to know about Fab today, you can get all of the Quixel Megascan assets completely for free, and then every other Tuesday, they give away a number of free assets. So regardless to what game engine you use, you're still going to want to use Fab at least just to hoard. Eventually, they will fix it and make it a more pleasant experience. And speaking of pleasant experiences, you'll notice here, all of the Quixel assets are now available on Fab. If you sign up before the end of the year, you can have all of the Quixel stuff. Now, if you're regular this channel, you probably saw this one uh, on the weekend here, or no, I guess that was Friday. Uh, they had to bring back Quixel Omega Scans website and the Quixel Bridge app because, quite frankly, Fab just didn't do what these things did. So, Fab launched too early and missing a ton of features. And one of the things they did again is they brought back Quixel Bridge, which is important because that is what allows you to take your Quixel assets and get them into a variety of different programs, not just Unreal Engine, but also into um, Blend. Under Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, Unity, etc. So Quixel has been turned back on. By the way, and stay tuned later this week, you're also going to be able to get all of the Quixel Omega Scans assets with one click on Quixel as well. It's a little confusing, but uh, I will I will at least tweet about that when it happens, but I'll probably do a video there as well. So what we got here, this is the roadmap of the future of Fab. And what you're going to see when we go through this is you're going to go, Wow, it launched without that feature? And yeah, there's a lot of things on here that you're like, wow, how could they launch Fab without that functionality? But we also see some of the things that they are planning to add back in. Now, I'm assuming this is more or less chronological uh, and prioritized. So basically, the stuff over here is highest priority as we go left to right. So what we're going to do is take a look left to right at what they're adding. So the first things that they're going to improve is a lot of the search functionality. So we got things like improved rankings, uh, plus in, in, uh, improved discovery, prioritize exact match of search, and then you're going to have search syntax, things like and, or, and not operators added in. Plus, you're going to be able to search by Quixel ID. So if you're searching for a very specific Quixel asset, you can find exactly it, which is important because, again, there's 17,000 plus of them, and they're all available for free, at least until the end of the year. Uh, and then also search suggestions with support for asset name, tags, and creator names. And then the big one, and you're going to be like, whoa, well, this isn't in there, and it isn't right now. You can't have assets on sale on Fab. Yes, this is the week of Black Friday, and Fab can't have sales. Wow. Eh? So they're going to have site-wide sales. Uh, that's So I don't exactly know what that means in terms of... Um, for the, the people that are publishing content, but they at least will have the functionality to have sales and sellers will also get improved reporting, things like monthly revenue reports, payout reports, etc. And you've kind of been saying that those don't exist either. Then we move on to number two here. And this is mostly about uh, navigating the site. Um, so nav tree and discover this guy down the side. So it's going to get improvements, improved grid, uh, including wider tiles, creator names, and others. That's the stuff over here on the right. On the left, you're going to get a nav tree view, content dependent uh, based off of the items that you're searching for, and you're going to have quick filtering there. And on top of that, so you're getting kind of the standard stuff. Uh, UI, filtering, and sorting are kind of this next set of improvements here. Uh, you're going to have a filter bar there, additional category dependent filter options, 
filter by tag, including context dependent suggested tags, filter by style, filter by version for a variety of formats, filter by creator, and then persistent filter flags such as game engine. So if you say you're only searching for Unity or Unreal Engine assets, you can have that persist across things. Mature AI, you can, again, AI being you can search if something was AI generated or not. If you want to stay the hell away from AI, that is an option you've got there. Also, you can search for license type in your library. My library being the stuff that you actually own or purchased or whatever, got for free. And we're going to have improvements in the sorting side of things. So you get sort alphabetically, sort by update, sort by category, parity in the sorting option between library and discovery, as well as collections. And then we're going to have improvements to the uh, UE plugin. The UE plugin was just released, I think, uh, maybe a week and a half ago. Um, Improve UI for downloading assets with many formats on the web. Ability to download previous versions for certain products. Quality of life UI fixes for the UE plugin related to scrolling and left-hand paneling. Drag and drop support for my library in the UE plugin. In the UE plugin, filter assets uh, for in use by current project, or you can find things on the disk or in project. All owned assets will appear in my library and the ability to hide assets from the library. So we're going to get a number of improvements to the UE plugin. Uh, and then product pages, uh, you're now going to have a video player. That's right. You currently can't have a video for your asset. You can have a 3D model view and stills. Uh, speaking of stills, they're also going to give you the ability to do higher resolution screenshots. So you could probably have up to 4K or whatever. So you can actually see with more detail what you know, an asset looks like. Uh, you have additional technical details of the asset available there as well. You're going to have change logs, which is obviously quite important. So as an asset is updated, you can now have change logs. And yes, it launched without change logs. It's, it's kind of stuff that you're like, how is this not in? Another interesting thing is comments via associated forum threads. So you can link a forum thread from the UE site over to an asset. So people can actually give some feedback and have some support going on or discussions or ask questions and so on. Again, a very important thing to add. An FAQ section is being added so creators will be able to give a little bit more detail about you know specifics of working with their thing and better wireframe representation representation in the 3d viewer and additionally rendering features it pulled over the um, sketchfab 3d viewer which is one of the improvements to fab but yeah no video support no faq no forum comments so those are things that all launched without that it is going to be getting uh, we're also going to get a wish list feature which yep there's no wish list right now on fab so that is one of the things we're working on uh and then this one is super super critical it's one of those things that when fab launch you're like why what you got rid of what uh yeah so uh reviews and ratings they got rid of text reviews so people couldn't actually write what they thought about assets they bought off the fab store this one was insane and i think at first it was actually intended but i think basically everyone said no 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 you need to have text reviews and thankfully text reviews are being added in as well as additional details under uh, the rating system are being added and the seller experience is going to get better. You're going to have the ability to create your own bundles. You can have user-initiated refunds, seller-initiated discounts. So that will be the seller being able to set their own sales, I believe is what that means. And then bulk updates. So actions published for the publishers in bulk now. And then we get the into the future stuff where there's a couple of really interesting things on here. Uh, we got MetaHuman, Twinmotion, and UEFN all being added in. Uh, but I think the more interesting thing here is Godot and Roblox are going to be added into the mix, as well as 2D, 3D audio types. Uh, and then finally, we're going to have further search and discovery improvements, and then Fab Desktop. Now, I think Fab Desktop is an important announcement because that is ultimately going to be like the software version of Fab. Uh, I think it's going to basically be Quixel Bridge for Fab. Now, when they actually did this whole... Um, this rollback of bridge the mega scans part of what they said is that bridge will be available until the replacement app comes out and that functionality is available in the replacement app my money says that that replacement app is fab desktop so that's going to be fab's bridge between you know cinema 4d and max and maya and blender and unity and then from the looks of things godot and roblox etc so that one is definitely going to be waited for with bated breath so that, ladies and gentlemen, is the future roadmap of Fab. As you can tell from this, it's clear that they missed some things that they really, really shouldn't have. But I'm wondering, do you see everything you need to see in Fab, at least on the roadmap? If they implement all of those changes and fixes, are you going to be happy with Fab? Or are you still going to hate it with your dying breath? Also, do keep in mind, sign up for Fab. Regardless to anything else, 
It is a digital hoarder's dream. Get on there before the end of the year and grab all of the Quixel Mega Scans assets for free. It is a one click process. And once the new year starts, you're going to get them all for free. It continues to be free. So it's super important you do this. And also keep in mind, every two weeks, they do give away three free assets. I cover them all on this channel. So if you want to stay up to date on that kind of stuff, do be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I will always keep you up to date on what is happening in the world of game development, including Fab, which hopefully over time becomes less and less of a train wreck. Let me know what you think of the Fab Roadmap in the comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.